Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Coach Adams Bikini TV. Today, I have a good one for you. We're going to be looking at the 2023 season and the up and coming talent and who you should be looking out for in both bikini and wellness in this episode. So let's jump right into it. And first up, we have Malu Duarte. So Malu started off the season last year coming out looking absolutely awesome. She got a third place in her first show and I was shocked when I first saw her. Her posing routine is amongst the best that I've ever seen in my entire career. When she came out, you couldn't help but look at her. It was just her, her posing routine was just flow. It was like she was doing like a dance. It was just, it was mesmerizing to see her, her posing routine. Better than, I mean, almost everyone in the entire IFBB. So she has that going for her stage presence. There's no issue with there. Her posing, there's no issue there. She just didn't have the, the size or the overall conditioning necessary at that, at that level that day. You know, she was going against Issa that day and going against Ashley that day. And I think in any other scenario, she probably would have won the show. But of course, you know, going against some two former Miss Olympias, it's not going to be an easy feat on, on any given day. So as Malu kept competing, she got a little bit tighter. She got a little bit better. Um, throughout the year, but then she kept competing and was, I think that for her, she wasn't able to hold the amount of muscle she needed to, to be competitive. And as she kept going and kept going, I think she started getting a little bit smaller, a little bit flatter. And that happens with a lot of people. It's just genetically, some people can keep competing all year and some people start getting flatter and a little stringy. And I think that's just what happened to her last year. So she's had a great off season. She's been able to recover and, and fill out a little bit and make her muscles more poppy. Um, I think that when she comes out this year, if she can come in the same shape that she came in her second show of the season last year with the more muscle she has now, maybe do two to three shows instead of going on and, and competing and competing um, and hold that fullness, she's going to be someone that will have no problem getting to the Olympia next year. And I think if you guys are at a show or you have a chance to see her posing routine and you want to look at how to perfect your posing routine and, and for that 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 factor, that X factor in your posing routine, watch her posing routine because she has that you know, I don't know what type of thing going with her posing routine and her stage presence that just captures your eye. And that's going to be something that's really hard to beat on, on anyone for any given day. You know, you can't teach someone that in posing. You can't say, okay, steal the light from everyone on stage that day. Like you can't do that. She's just, you just have it or you don't. So she's someone good. If you're looking at in helping your posing routine, looking at getting your posing routine to the next level, she's someone that you should be watching. If you have a chance to go to one of the pro shows she's competing at, I highly recommend it if you're an up and coming bikini competitor. But not a lot to work on for her overall physique. She just needed a tiny bit more in the shoulders, a tiny bit more in the tines to show up. Literally a hair better conditioning, and she would have already been there. And it just it just didn't line up for her last year. And I think this year there's going to be nothing stopping her. There's just, just a, even just a little bit of improvements from the next year. So <clears throat> one to look out for. And if she nails her conditioning at the Olympia with that, with that stage presence, she's going to be hard to not get noticed at even a big level show like that. Next up, we have rookie Samantha Minchel. Hopefully I'm saying her name right. She won her pro card at the Amateur Olympia in Portugal, um, and she has just amazing shape. Her shape is crazy good. So that's something that I was, when I saw her, I was like, wow, that girl actually has a really good chance when she comes over to the American market to do well because she is so poppy. And this is the thing we talk about when we talk about pretty muscle. So that's something that I've always keep talking about, pretty muscle, pretty muscle. So what does it mean, right? Well, when we look at the roundness of her overall muscle, so look at her legs here. When we look in close at her legs, you see how she has really good, really round and very muscular legs, but they're not strided anywhere. You know, you see the there's no striations in the hamstrings. They're just nice and round, nice fullness to them. Um, looking at her glutes, there's no crazy striations in her glutes. There's great tie-ins. There's not separation in her hamstrings. She's got just a tiniest bit of separation here. But the density of the muscle, it isn't crazy dense. It's not crazy hard. Uh, there's no separation detail. It's just pretty round muscle bellies, right? And so in this front pose, there's very few girls that can hang with her on this front pose. If, if anything, on this front pose, the only things that I would change, I would say watch out for her overall arm size. The arm size is a little bit big in that front pose. That's something that she can help with her posing. Um, the other thing is her hair is a little bit long. It's kind of not showing her lower back right on top of her glutes, and it's not helping not helping her overall shape in the back pose, but there's very, very little things for her to work on on this physique. Great V taper, great shoulders, great shoulder width. Um, I, I think she's sitting a little bit heavy in her hips too. You can see that like, she's really pushing this S curve like to its max. So I think she can. she's so powerful in the glute, she doesn't really need to push that much in the, the front pose, so much arch, but um, really, really incredible shape. And honestly, her balance from upper to lower body is pretty good, even with her pushing so hard in those glutes. So 
tiny, tiny little things for her to get to that advanced pro level. And I think she's going to learn along the way. And honestly, um, it's going to take a few shows for her to really get the flow of it, get feedback from the judges. Maybe this posing is perfect for her. Obviously, it worked in uh, Portugal for her to get a pro card. But at the pro level, there's not a lot for her to work on. She's muscular enough. She's one of the girls I say, hey, go right into the pro level. Like, just start competing. You know, you're already there. You look great. Let's just see how you do on that stage. And let's see what the feedback is from the upper level judges and get some feedback from you. Just keep going from there. But she doesn't, she's not one of those girls who needs, you know, a year to compete after she gets her pro card, a year to build to get that pro card. There are a few of them out there, and I'm actually going to go into one right now. Uh, but incredible physique. I think she's got a, a ton of potential. I will not be surprised if I see her get to the Olympia this year in her first rookie year. And this next competitor, I think, potentially could be a sleeping giant. I could be totally off on this one. This one's kind of our dark horse of the maybes, but she could be awesome. She could be, you know, still undersized. But to me, it looks like she could be someone that we all should be paying attention to. We will find out very, very shortly um, how she's going to do. So who I'm talking about is someone you guys probably haven't heard of. She got her pro card in Lithuania in 2021. So this is going to be her pro her, her pro debut will be in 2023, and she's coming over to the States here soon. And I was shocked when I saw her overall physique. Now, uh, who I'm talking about is someone you guys probably haven't heard of. Her name is Laura. I'm probably going to butcher her name. Laura Stelinkevici. Laura Stelinkevici. Laura Stelinkevici. Laura Stelinkevici. Laura. Stelinkevici. Laura. <laughs> Okay, so as I said, Laura got her pro card in 2021 in Lithuania. And I will say when, I, when she got her pro card, I was like, wow, she's a small girl. She's very petite. Um, you know, con considering today's bikini standard, she would be undersized by pretty much anyone's definition. So looking at her overall physique, though, let's go ahead and take a look at it when she won her pro card. So this is Laura the day that she won her pro card. You know, the shape. Now, here's the thing. A lot of you are looking at this just saying, yeah, she's a little small to winning a pro card. That's a surprise. But look at that shape. And when you see her in her pictures here, getting her pro card award, you can see, man, she is actually, you know, pretty petite. She's pretty small. Um, so a couple of things. When we look at her physique, when we look at it closely, the structure is incredible, right? And I like this. I like her a lot because she gives a lot of hope. To a lot of the girls who are more petite, who are saying, you know, I'm never going to be big enough for a bikini now. I'm never going to be big enough for a bikini now. Very, very petite. But look at that structure. Wide shoulders, tiny waistline, great glutes, right? And I was looking at her. I was like, yeah, no, that's not going to be someone who's going to have a breakout year the way I think, right? Remember, this is 2021. Now, we don't have any, any pictures of her competing recently because she hasn't competed recently. But let's take a look at her current Instagram and look at how much muscle little Laura has put on. And this is not the same Laura that won her pro card in Lithuania a couple years back. This Laura is jacked and she's full. She's still very petite, but structurally the same structure. I mean, these lines are crazy. Look at her glutes from the back now, which doesn't have very many pictures that we could really assess in terms of her competing, right? Because she hasn't competed. But as far as her putting on muscle, and her making the improvements that she needed to make, obviously she knew she needed to compete. She took a year off to get a little bit bigger. And I would say, based on these pictures at least, she's someone to watch out for. She's someone I'm like, wow, she made some serious improvements and she still has that crazy small structure that is very suited for a bikini, you know? Um, but the shape on her physique, the roundness to the shoulders now, the width, her glute to hip, her, her waist to hip ratio is just crazy. I mean, very few people have that. Um, so someone to look out for, I don't know how that's going to translate to the stage. Obviously, you know, with Instagram, you're going to always post your best pictures and best angles and whatnot, but consistently all of her pictures, they look great. I mean, the muscle is there now and I think that she's going to be a real threat. I mean, we'll, we'll see, you know, someone, it's kind of one of those ones where it's just like a dark horse. We just don't know. She could be great. I don't know. Maybe she's, maybe she's still too small, but I think that well, I'm very excited about seeing her compete this year. Um, she's coming out to the States, so I'm very excited to see what she does and what she looks like. And, um, you know, she could be someone that just comes in and just starts killing it. And she could be someone that comes in and is just too small. So we'll see. But looking at her overall shape and structure, that's just something you can't train. Someone either has a structure or they don't. You can't train someone to have a tiny waist and wide shoulders and round muscle bellies. You just can't do that. It's just you have it or you don't. She definitely has it and just needed the size, and she has it now, it, it appears. So good luck to her, and I'm excited to see her compete this year. So you guys heard me rave about Caitlin Long all year. Um, so 
Kaylin was someone I talked about needing to just stop competing last year at a certain point and just focus on gaining size. She came out. She did really well. I think she got top five in, I think, almost all her shows. I want to say she did four or five shows last year. And I was like, man, if she just fills out her frame, comes in a hair tighter, she's going to be pretty unbeatable. Like, she's going to be hard to contend with because the thing is, when you have someone doing well at a pro level with how much muscles required these days in, in pro bikini – and they're already doing good, it's, it's like, man, she's not even close to her potential. So if you look at, you know, if you look at some of these girls who are doing well, if you take, let's say, a, a Maureen, for example, or a, a Jennifer Dory or someone at that upper level, a Laura Lee, right? When you look at them, you're like, okay, what do they need to improve on for their physique to get better? Well, it's, for them, it's not more muscle. You know, they already have, like, as much muscle as they really need. It might be conditioning. It might need to be consistency at the shows, Maybe they're posing, things like that. But you're not looking at those girls and you're like, oh, they need a lot more muscle to be competitive. They need a lot more muscle to do better. When you have someone come out who's already beating all these girls who are kind of maxed out in muscle, not the, obviously not Laura Lee, Maureen, and, and Jennifer. She's not beating them yet. But she's beating girls that are already kind of in that same situation where they're, they have enough muscle. They don't need more muscle. They need to work on their stage presence. They need to work on these things. And Kaylin's beating all of them without having her physique maxed out in muscle. That's a pretty dangerous competitor. You know, the, uh, the other person we saw that was kind of like that was Lauren Dannenmiller. You know, she didn't have the muscle, but she was still winning shows. You know, she got top 10 at the Olympia one time, and that's purely based on stage presence and structure. You know, she's, of course, she's got a good build to her, but it wasn't maxed out. You know, maybe she was somewhere around 80% of her max of how much muscle she could have. Caitlin's in that same position. You know, her shoulders aren't fully developed. She doesn't have the density yet to her muscles. She needs more overall muscle, and she also needs a little bit better conditioning but remember, she's placing top five in like all her shows. So she took some time off last year. She's been focusing on growing and getting her density there, getting her muscles there. Her balance isn't really off. She just needs more size. So when you have bigger muscles you're, and, and you bring the same level of conditioning, you're going to look tighter. So conditioning shouldn't be an issue now. She put on a good three pounds or so of lean mass. So she's someone to really watch out for. Last year, I said, I don't think that she's going to get to the Olympia. I don't think she was there yet to get to the Olympia because her, her muscle just wasn't there. The density wasn't there. Um, but everything else was there. I was like, you know, if it's like one of those weird shows where a lot of people just don't show up or something, if there's three shows in a weekend and one of the shows has, you know, eight girls in it, maybe she can get to the Olympia that way. But this year, I think she can get to the Olympia with a, a regular show with 30 girls in it because she's put herself, has, has enough time put into it now where she can have the density and have the muscle necessary to be competitive and actually win in the Olympia or win a show, get to the Olympia. And someone with a structure like that, depending on how much muscle she puts on, she might be someone we're talking about in the top 15 at the Olympia come end of the year. I don't know. I guess we're going to see what she did in the off season here pretty soon. And I'm really excited about seeing that. So good luck to Kaylin next year. I think she's going to do great. And now due to popular demand, we're going to start talking about wellness in bikini TV. Now we're getting a lot of wellness requests. So I said, why not? Let's just jump into it. Let's just go all in in 2023 and start doing some well. So let's show some wellness, some love this year. I'm excited about it. Having some more fun with it. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Who are we going to be looking out for in 2023 in wellness? So first up, we have Miss Wellness USA, Jennifer Scarborough Zollers. Hopefully I'm saying her name right. Now, looking at her overall physique, I, when, I, when she, I was at USA's and I saw her come out and I was with my friends and I was like, man, that's, that's Miss USA right there. No one's even close to her. You know, it's pretty rare when someone comes out at a big show like that, like a, a national level competition at USA's where they stand out so much that it's the clear winner. And it, the, the divisions weren't even done yet. And she came out and I was like, dude, is this girl like an Olympian already? <laughs> like, who is this girl? Like, it looked, she looked like a guest poser amongst regular competitors. Like, it didn't make sense when she came out on stage. So, um, I mean, and everyone was talking about her when she first came out. Obviously, she was going to win Miss USA. It was like probably the easiest judging that anyone had to do that day was just when she came out. So she came out, looked awesome. She ended up getting as high as second place um, last year in the show's. I think that she will actually she will absolutely be a contender this year and get to the Olympia. I don't think there's any chance she won't get to the Olympia. You know, of course, if she's doing everything and competing and decides to go for the run, I, I think that there's only a few things keeping her back from getting to the Olympia. So um, let's go ahead and jump into what that is and go from there. So whenever you want to look at an athlete's potential, you kind of want to put them next to the current champ and say, okay, what what clearly stands out? What does she need to work on to get her to the next level? And something that really stood out to me was just the overall density and size of her arms. When you look at her arms next to the current champ, you can see the difference of that pretty kind of soft muscle on the arms and shoulders versus the kind of density 
and even strided shoulders that you're seeing out of her on the on her shoulders and arms. So I think that one, that's a, just a, taking a little bit away from her overall physique. Um, two, on her overall waistline, I think that she can have her core a little bit tighter in this front pose. I think that's something that she could control in that front pose. And, and you know, this is her at Clash where she got second place. And I think that she can control her waistline a tiny bit. Just, just hold it in just a tiny bit. You can see uh, Francielle, she's holding her waistline in a little bit tighter. She's, it's not like a vacuum, but it is holding it in tighter. And I think that that's going to help her quite a bit. And you can also see the S curve being different. You know, she's pushing a lot more in that arch of her back, and she's not po pushing so much in that arch of her back. And I think that's going to help her waistline a little bit as well. So just a couple things that she really needs to work on to push herself over the top. Now, when we pull them to the back, look at this shape. I mean, the shape is crazy. Remember, this is, a, this is her first year competing as a pro in wellness. But look at how reminiscent the shape is. It's very comparable between the two. Um, and again, the only thing that I'm really seeing from her is just a little bit of an overpowering um, upper body. Like her shoulders and arms are just a little bit bigger than they really need to be when you look at next, next to Francia, right? So I think she tones that down a little bit. The back is already there. You know, she's got crazy good hamstrings, crazy tie-ins. Look at that shape, that upper glute shape. I mean, it's very comparable. Now, the difference is she's got... Uh, Francia has a little bit more of that pretty muscle like we talked about, right? It's not as dense. It's not as separated. It's not as grainy, right? And so that's going to be the difference between her. Bring the arms and shoulders down just a hair. Um, work on the posing in that front pose. Keep that core a little bit tighter. And, you know, if there's a way that we can get your muscle to not be so dense and so grainy, it's going to be, I think, a plus when you're standing next to a girl like this who has a lot of that pretty muscle. But I think there's no chance she's not going to get to the Olympia this year if she gives her all this season and gives herself a good couple shows to get there. And next up, we have Shelby Talon, who won her pro card at Nationals. Now, uh, the reason I have Shelby Talon pulled up is basically based on popular demand. So the way that I started doing this was I asked on Instagram, who do you think is going to be a breakout star next year on the stage in both bikini and in wellness? So a lot of this was from you guys. So thanks for following on Instagram at Team Elite Physique and sending me uh, this to help with these videos. I appreciate it. And so I had, a, I had an overwhelming amount. I think she had the most, um, the most DMs were sent to me about, about her. So I was like, okay, I better, I better look at her and um, give her a close look. Now, I do see what everyone is saying about Shelby. Now, so the reason I think that she was so popular and so many people liked her is because they love her overall structure. You know, this is something that a lot of people can relate to especially in the bikini world, because she has kind of the bikini structure, but the wellness amount of muscle. And I think that, that that's very relatable for people because not everyone is built with those bigger bones that the wellness competitors have, that more of that medium build, medium to even sometimes larger build. Um, she's got a tiny waistline, which I feel is very attractive in the wellness division because a lot of the wellness competitors are so muscular and they are those medium-based uh, women they don't have that tiny waistline like she does. So that's why I think she's one of the, one of the stars that people are talking about. Um, but here's the problem when you have that more petite structure, it's going to take you a lot longer to build enough muscle to be competitive next to the more muscular, more medium-based competitors, more medium-build competitors. So it's going to take her a little while to get there, and that's all I think that she needs right now. So she has the look. I mean, she has everything that you need um, to be good in wellness. She has the beauty flow, the complexion, the structure, um, but she does need the size. She needs a little bit more size to be competitive. And she's going to need to be have better conditioning than this the next time she competes on the pro level. When you look at her overall conditioning, just a hair tighter in the core is going to be helpful. Just a tiniest bit tighter in the shoulder. Just a tiniest bit tighter in the legs. When you see the glutes, there's still just a tiniest bit of body fat here on the, on the lower mid glute here in the middle of the glute. So she's going to need to fill out her frame a little bit. But look at her tie-ins. Look at that shape. Look at those round muscle bellies to her quads and her hamstrings. Um, a little bit more, though. That's all she's going to need. I, honestly, I think that she's not going to be a breakout star in 2023. I think that she'll be a, a, a star in 2024, and she just needs to put a solid year of building muscle into it to be competitive with these more muscular upper-level girls. But everything's there. It just needs a little bit more. You know, the structure's there. The beauty's there. Everything's there. Just a tiny bit more to be competitive on that, on that top-tier level. And next up, who I think will be a breakout star, is Priscilla Lind. Now, Priscilla won her pro card at Universe, and I wanted to go into her physique because there's a, there's a few things that in her physique that can really make a difference for her. So first off, let's go into the positives for Priscilla here. I mean, from the back, it doesn't get much better than that. I mean, she is crazy good from the back. Look at those quads. Like, look at that sweep on her quad there. That is just craziness on her quads. 
Um, but it's still not dense and separated and grainy. It's still pretty muscle, even though it's really it's really big muscle, you know? It's great, huge quads, awesome shape. I think that she can use just a little bit more in the hamstrings. Those tie-ins are just crazy good. They're just deep tie-ins that just connect all the way to the hamstring. I mean, this is like a solid line connected to the hamstring here. Just crazy, crazy detail on her glutes and on her um, on, on her overall legs, you know, without being crazy grainy. That's, it's just awesome, awesome shape. She's very blessed genetically to have that. And the development is crazy good. From the back, good rear delts, right? Everything's there. Now, a couple of things that are these, these mistakes that are not going to fly on the pro level is her hair being on top of her glutes, you know? Her hair is on top of her glutes. And the, another thing that I think is really hurting her is her overall posing. I think that if she comes into the show next year and she gets her posing down, she gets her stage package down, um, she, I honestly think that this suit is very close to her skin tone. It's a little monochromatic for me. I would probably change her suit color as well. Some people just have those more red undertones to their skin. Some people have more yellow undertones to their skin. You know, everyone has their kind of like their undertones to their skin. With her, this looks very monochromatic, so it doesn't really pop so much. Um, I don't think it's helping that there's a red background as well, which is something you can't really account for, you know, but it is, it does take away from it. Um, and I think so. If she changed her, her hair, cut it a little bit, changed her suit color to create more contrast with her overall look. And then when we go into her front pose and we go into her front in general, just a little bit more in the shoulders. And honestly, I think that it's not really just her shoulder development because from the back, she's got pretty good rear delts. I think that it's how she's posing. I think she's posing her upper body a little smaller than she needs to. I think she can widen that posing up a little bit and she could correct most of this with just posing. So most of this is presentation stuff. You know, her, her front pose, a little bit wider in the shoulders, her hair, her suit. Um, I think that just those little things are going to make a huge impact to her. And then, yes, maybe a tiny bit more muscle in the shoulders, but nothing crazy. You know, when you look at her from the back, it is amongst the best of them. So I think that she could have a breakout year if she focuses on those key things, puts on a tiny bit of muscle, but she is someone to look out for, for sure. So I'll wish her a lot of luck. And with that, that is it. Thank you guys so much. Did I miss someone? If so, leave it in the comments below. Always like and subscribe. I'm thirsty for followers. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll talk to you next time. Let's get this year started.